That's right, it's time to talk about the GameSir X2S. Hall sticks, hall triggers, you saw us cover this one at CES, and I am so excited. I love telescopic controllers. I'm gonna show you this one compared against some of my favorites. We're gonna try it not only in a regular phone, but also a flip phone and a 11 inch tablet. All right, let's hop in. Here it is, X2S Type-C. Oh, that just feels premium. Got that rubberized back. I like that purple too, look at that lavender. Got those new hall trigger buttons. Fun GameSir sticker. Looks like we get uh, convex and concave nubbin options. You know I like that convex life. Nice. So in the previous model, the GameSir G8, one nice thing about this one is you could pop off the side and then swap out just the entire stick. So this is like their fancy high-end version. CEO mentioned that this one's modeled after the 3DS LL, and that's fun. D-pad is clicky, face buttons are clicky micro switch. You do have those hull sticks left and right, clicky tops, USB-C in the bottom left, this extends out decently far, but here's the trick. So you can pop it like this and stretch it pretty wide. So we'll try it with some different options and that just pops right in. So they built it in so you don't need to actually do any hardware mods. That's great. It looks like you have some ribbing here so you can fit a variety of phones. This does look like this can be removed if you want to put a phone on with a thicker case. Yeah, looks like there's some glue there, so it's probably a permanent mod. Compared to their older line, they started moving to putting the USB-C on the right, which if you have a folding phone, that makes this really a non-starter. And so the last good controller we got was the X2 here. This is definitely very, very similar all the way through and through. But once again, we moved the USB to the left, and I love to see that. We didn't even get that on the G8. So if you saw my video on the G8, you noticed I had my Samsung folding phone having to put it like this. But the benefit of it being on the left means that we can do this. And that fits great, it connects. And what's cool is that you can fold it like that and continue playing in this mode. But yeah, I would say buttons feel similar to the X2. Of course, big improvement on L2, R2. So this now fully depresses. I did like on this one how they had the bigger face buttons and these were analog as well. I wonder if this one pops out. X2 Pro pops out as well. So this has been my winner up until now for these telescopic controllers. This having fully depressible, grippy shoulders is great. I love this, the backing on this one. Having the function buttons is helpful. Ergonomics wise, you kind of know what you're getting here if you've held an X2. The bump out is maybe just a little bit more. Very, very close design style. Yeah, I mean, these buttons do feel good though. Take a listen. Grim Valor is the game to test with. Very responsive, no latency noticed. Definitely like the buttons better on the G8. You know, getting these full-size buttons, rubber membrane, D-pad, you get a bit more control here, a little bit more ergonomic. You get 3.5 headphone out. This one you do not. This has LEDs that light up. That also is more of a power draw. There's something to be said about it being just so pocketable. Love the colorway option. Yeah, I mean, playing on the G8 Galileo, it's a bit more comfy experience. Nice, big, mushy buttons. Definitely more of a Cadillac sort of experience. Quiet L1 and R1. You also get two additional function buttons here, which is great to have. But think about it, it is twice the cost. So this is $80 USD compared to, with coupon, $40 or $45 without. I mean, for $40, you are getting a lot of controller here. This is not as portable, of course, but really depends on your use case. Let's see how wide we can fit something. So here's a Lenovo Tab P11 Pro Gen 2, and this is 11.2 inches. Let's see if it'll take it. And holy cow, that works. And it looks like we should be able to get the case on here too. Yeah, it'll work with the case. That is insane, look at that. 
I mean, it's solid, it doesn't wiggle really. So this isn't only for Android, by the way. This will also work for Apple products. Let's see what else this thing can do and install the app. Who is this guy? So their app works with a wide array of devices and it looks like you can download the games right from within the app, which is awesome. And that download is gonna take you to Google Play. Ooh, Liberty City Stories. Let's do some Call of Duty Mobile. Okay, so right out the gate, this is a game where the controller does not seem to be working. So a few things we can try, we can check settings. So it wants a Bluetooth paired controller, generally an Xbox controller or something reporting itself as an Xbox controller. Or what you can do is use key mapping. So let's see if we get any options for that. Here we go, launch in G-Touch mode, need to map keys. So you gotta give that permission to GameSir. Oh, any firmware upgrades? No updates found, good. Gamepad test. Okay. So let's try with G-Touch mode. Oh look, they have a Call of Duty official configuration. Use it now. There we go. Hey. We're gonna take a quick look at some Nintendo DS emulation. So you're gonna wanna use the GameSir app for this. Now when you plug in the controller and you have the app, you wanna say allow, flip open my screen here. And this is something that threw me for a loop at first. So you cannot just launch an app like Drastic and expect it to see the controller as a controller. You need to go into the GameSir app and just launch Drastic through here. It also should be mentioned that neither this nor the G8 have rumble built in. One thing I noticed, if you have a large thumb like me, then you might get annoyed constantly pushing this right joystick here. It kind of gets in the way a little bit. So what you can do is just go ahead and take that nub off. But yeah, controls really well. Joystick is smooth. You know, with the G8 here, only issue again is having the input on the right means you're gonna have the screen coming down off the controller, which visually doesn't look the best, but weight balance wise is not too bad. You could always go for a Bluetooth connection as well, something like the iPega 9023S. Then you can kind of get it centered. Now this thing is definitely a monstrosity. Not the most visually appealing, but it gets the job done. You are gonna experience just a little bit of latency, of course, since you're running over Bluetooth, but these are around the same price point as this, and definitely there's no contest. Getting the hall sticks and triggers in here and the portability and everything is gonna really outclass this, but it really depends. Comfort-wise, something like this might make sense. This has been a tried and true controller for me for many, many, many years now. It just works. You do have turbo function on here if you want to enable that. Nah, some Castlevania. What's nice about having a screen like this is you can definitely full screen it like that for DS games that maybe don't need the bottom screen as often. All right, that's just a very brief look at emulation. Finally, let's take a look at Game Pass. And what we're gonna do is add it through the GameSir app. And if you run this through the app, then it's gonna report as a compatible controller for this. Yeah, definitely this right stick for my thumb gets in the way a little bit. Likewise, it does as well on the G8, so usually I take this off uh, and replace it with the smaller size. Yeah, these analog triggers are great on this. That feels good. Stick movement feels good on the right, consistent, and I can use it perfectly fine without the joystick cap on there. All right, let's wrap up. So if you're thinking of which of these to pick up, you're looking at the X2S at $40 with the coupon, again, 45 without, or the GameSir G8 Galileo coming in at $80. What you're gonna get is better ergonomics on the G8. I like the face buttons better, nice big mushy rubber membrane. D-pad has great, great pivot to it. The sticks are a little bit more, a little bit bigger, so you get a little bit more comfort, I suppose, when playing them. L1 and R1 are quiet and I like that. I actually am tied on liking the triggers. Kind of almost like these a bit better. I like how they press down just a bit more. This, you do get two extra function buttons, which is always nice to have in Android. This one, you can stretch wide. This one, not quite as much. But again, remember the trick. And again, disclosure on the trick here is that if you do this a number of times, some people have reported that it starts to get a little bit floppy. 
so you do lose a little bit of that initial tightness by uh, by popping that out too much. This one, you could do that as well, but you're gonna have to uh, use a modding trick. You're gonna have a 3.5 headphone out option on here, and you're not gonna have that on here. I like the colorway a bit better on this. You know, the SNES classic look on this is not bad. I like that, but just this is so cute. I'm not the biggest fan of these micro switch style buttons in general, and on all the games here controllers, this has never been something I've really enjoyed. Both of these, you're gonna have to rip out the lining if you have a big case or your phone's not quite fitting, so that is a bit of a permanent mod unless you want to glue them back on, but... But all in all, I mean, for $40, this is really an easy recommend for me. I've not come across any quality issues. I like the grippy back. I like the matte coating on this. Same thing here. I mean, really, you can't go wrong with either of these. It's really which use case is going to be for you. This is going to be way more pocketable. This is going to be a little chunkier. Neither of these come with a carry case. That's something that Gamester used to do with the X2 line and something they've stopped. But it was nice to have that. So you will want to look out for a case or something to carry this in. I would say the G8 Galaxy. Leo is still my favorite overall of the two just because I prefer the buttons but if I'm going to go out of the house and just have my phone with me this is probably the companion controller that I would pick if you stack this up against other telescopic controllers like the iPega yeah I mean this is going to win obviously just for the direct connection not having that bluetooth latency is great stay on the lookout because there will be a bluetooth version available for this apparently later on both of these will work with your iOS devices with your Android devices compared to something like the backbone these micro switch feeling buttons are going to be very similar to that. I didn't mind it so much in there. I the Backbone 1 was my pocketability favorite telescopic controller for a long time, and this now has finally beaten that for me. And then comparing to things like the Razer Kishi line of controllers, for me, this blows Razer's products out of the water. But yeah, I think the GameSir app is a little bit wonky. So that has a little bit of a learning curve to it and not as easy to use. This again, $40, use the $5 off coupon, pick it up on Amazon. You can also find this on AliExpress, which I will link as well as direct from the Gamester website. But yeah, I'm pretty stoked on Gamester's offerings this year, as well as I'm excited to try out things like the, the Asus Tessin, the Seraphim, and if Razer ever releases their new Hull Effect Kishi, I would be excited to see what the final version of that is. So, all right, that'll do it for us today. Do let me know what you think about this one in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay in the know for all of your favorite retro handhelds. This has been Stubbs. Please take care of your handhelds, everybody, and take care of each other.